When it comes to electric vehicles, Volvo is on an ambitious plan to move over 50% of their sales globally to EVs by the middle of this decade. Now they started this transition last year with the all new Volvo XC40 Recharge. It was the first fully electric vehicle in the Volvo lineup. Now for 2022, they are following it up with a second model. This is the 2022 Volvo C40 Recharge. It essentially takes everything that we liked about the XC40. However, Volvo is giving us their first ever kind of coupified SUV with this sloping roof line, which gives the car a sportier design and also improves the range slightly to 226 miles. Now, I already had a chance to drive this vehicle last month out in Palm Springs, California. However, this week, Volvo has loaned me the C40 Recharge for a full week where we can put it through our usual battery of tests. I'm gonna do a zero to 60 performance test. I'm gonna live with the car for the full week, and I'm also gonna do some range testing on it because I wanna see just how close we can get to that 226 mile claimed range. And at the end of this video, we're going to find out in the world of ever expanding premium long range electric SUVs, where does the 2022 Volvo C40 Recharge stack up? Stay tuned to find out. So before we start talking about the design differences between the C40 and the XC40, let me first open up the hood because with an electric vehicle, the million dollar question is always, does this vehicle have a frunk? And I'm happy to report that the C40 Recharge does, albeit a very small one. But since we're underneath here, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain specs. Now the front is pretty small. It measures just around one cubic feet. It has just enough room for the mobile charger, but since we're underneath here, let's go ahead and talk about the specs. This car comes standard as a twin charge model, which, mean you, which means we have dual electric motors. There's one in the front, one in the rear, uh, and it's all fed through a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack. About 75 kilowatts is usable. Uh, it offers up 402 horsepower and 486 pound-feet of torque. That is more horsepower, about 50 to 100 horsepower more versus most of the competition although it is less powerful versus vehicles like the Mustang Mach-E GT and GT Performance and a Tesla Model Y Performance. So Volvo gives you a little bit more, but not quite as much as the top dog shelf. But remember, this is priced more in line with a long range, extended range battery pack vehicle like a Mach-E Premium or a Hyundai Ioniq 5 or Kia EV6 with the uh, all wheel drive system. Now, uh, Volvo says the performance is pretty strong. You'll get to 60 in around 4.5 seconds uh, and you'll do about 226 miles on a full charge. This vehicle has an 11 kilowatt uh, onboard charger, which means you can fully charge this vehicle overnight on a level two in about eight hours, which is not bad. And then if you guys want to DC fast charge the vehicle, this vehicle will accept up to 150 kilowatts, which means you can go from 10 to 80% in about 37 minutes. So not bad. It's about average for the segment, a little bit slower versus cars like the Ionic 5, the EV6, and of course the Tesla Model Y. Now, in terms of the curb weight, this vehicle isn't any lighter versus the competition. It weighs in at around 4,800 pounds, but surprisingly, you can still tow with it. It'll tow a maximum of 2,000 pounds. So let's go ahead and close this up and then close the hood and talk about the styling of the C40. Now, Volvo has only been showing this car in Fjord Blue. It's a $695 upcharge for this color. It certainly works well with the lines, and unlike the C4 or the XC40, uh, this vehicle has a slightly unique front fascia. You can see the Volvo grille uh, is still front and center, although it has been closed off, as you can see with this like panel, because an EV doesn't need the actual uh, cooling. There is another area here where it is slightly open at the bottom. Uh, and then you can see the Volvo logo. This is the newer Volvo logo. It has a camera there for the 360 camera. I kind of wish that you can get an option to black out the chrome. I think it would look slightly better there. And then you can see looking at the headlights, this comes with the usual Thor's Hammer full LED headlights with the uh, LED daytime running light and turn signals, LED low and high beams. You also get LED fog lights, which is nice. I like the black accents here. I like the kind of cleaner look, although I, I kind of wish they added the gloss black from here to this portion of the front fascia. But that's kind of a small detail. You can see this vehicle is built off of the CMA platform. It's a compact modular architecture, not the same as something like the Volvo S60 or the XC60. Um, this vehicle technically wasn't built as an EV from the ground up. It was uh, first a gas vehicle, although Volvo doesn't offer a gas gas-powered version of the C40, only on the XC40, where they plucked out the engine and they also lined the floor with battery packs, but it's not a fully dedicated EV. The beauty is Volvo saves a little bit money on production, but you do get a slightly compromised interior space. Now looking around the side profile of this vehicle, at 174.4 inches long, this is about 10 to 12 inches shorter than most of the competition. It's about the same overall length as the XC40, although because of that roof line, it does drop the height of this vehicle by about three inches. Its wheelbase is the same at around 104 point, uh, or 106.4 inches long. 
Um, so it is a nicely proportioned vehicle. If you want something smaller, this is what you're going to be looking at. Now, the C40 Recharge only comes as this ultimate trim, which means you have these really beautiful looking 20 inch wheels. You can see it's wrapped in two 35, 45 width tires in the front. You have slightly fatter 255 tires in the back. These are Pirelli Scorpio Zero all season tires. You can see the brakes uh, look pretty nice, although I wish that Volvo had painted the caliper to make it stand out a little bit more. But I think these are one of my favorite looking wheels in the segment. You can see it has the requisite black cladding around the lower portion of the side of the vehicle. And you have just under six and a half inches of ground clearance. So you're obviously not gonna be taking this SUV off-roading, uh, but it does again, give you a more SUV stance and feel versus something like the Ionic 5 and EV6, which feel more like hatchbacks. Now looking at the side here, you can see the side mirrors are black painted. You have an LED turn signal. You can see the roof is black. Black, which is nice. You have a full glass roof, although that roof does not open. It doesn't include a sunshade either. And then back here, you can see you have that twin spoiler element. Actually, it's a three spoiler element because there's one here at the bottom. This is all for aerodynamics. And you also notice there's no rear wiper on this vehicle like you get on the XC40 because Volvo says it's not needed because of the way this is shaped. It's going to help kind of funnel the air through the back window to kind of help keep it clear of water. Although I'd say that uh, in like a snowstorm, for example, if this gets caked with dirt, this is gonna be very dirty and you're not gonna be able to see out of the back. So that's something that you should consider. Uh, I think they also removed it because it helps save cost. costs. The rear of the vehicle you can see has a very, very distinctive look. And I didn't even notice this, the car has sequential LED turn signals, which is a really great feature. Um, I also like the way the LED taillights are shaped. It's a full LED, which has a really kind of cool three-dimensional look. I think it looks great. There's a recharged twin badge here to show that this is the electric model with all-wheel drive. And then you can see Volvo is proudly spelled out at the back of this vehicle. It's certainly a very distinctive car. And I actually had a few people uh, giving this vehicle some stares, especially in this fjord blue exterior color. It's a really nice color combination. Now looking at the trunk capacity, obviously you are going to expect a compromised trunk and that's the case here. You get around 14 and a half cubic feet of space. That's a reduction of about eight to nine cubic feet from the XC40 recharge, which has the more conventional squared off shape. If you fold down the seats here, Volvo says it'll expand it out to around 45 cubic feet of space. That's about a 10 cubic feet reduction versus the XC40. So that's something to keep in mind. Underneath here, you can see there is a pretty decent underfloor storage area there. Uh, I believe there could be a spare tire, although I don't see it here. It might be underneath all the, actually it's, if you look underneath here, you can see no spare tire. Although Volvo does give you a jack and a, uh, the tools to remove the wheel. Um, but I imagine maybe you can add that as a dealer accessory. There's certainly room for it, but overall the cargo area is compromised, but it's certainly still usable. So now let's talk about the inside of the Volvo C40 Recharge. The first thing I want to show you guys, however, is the key fob. You can see Volvo has been doing this key for about seven years now. It was first introduced on the all new XC90. They've actually made the key cheaper over the years where it used to be covered in the same leather material as the seats. Now it's just a cheaper plastic material. The buttons are on the side of the vehicle. You should be also able to access the car through the Volvo app where you can remote start it. You can ping the car. You can also check the range and the charge status. I don't ac have access to that because obviously this is a press vehicle, it's not my own vehicle. Now, you can see when you do lock the doors, you can set the mirrors to also fold in. I like the chime that Volvo makes when they lock and unlock. It just has a very satisfying noise. And then you can see the Fjord blue exterior of my tester is complemented by a Fjord blue interior for the carpet. It even includes it on the door panel. And this is the first Volvo model to get a completely leather-free cabin. Now, of course, using a leather-free cabin did create a challenge and Volvo designers actually said that they wanted this to feel premium. And sadly, I don't think the interior feels premium, but it does have a pretty unique look to it. It's kind of like the way the Ford Maverick is, how it's a cheap interior, but there's a lot of interesting design touches. Now you can see the seats uh, have this combination of a faux suede with the faux uh, vit or leatherette material. You can see it has like a stitch, a contrasting stitching, which is nice. The leather itself or the faux leather itself feels like vinyl. So it doesn't feel all that great, but you can see it does include a thigh extender over here for both front seats. And the seats also adjust in eight ways with a four way uh, lumbar adjustment, which is nice. The bolstering is fairly aggressive. Uh, and then you can see the headrests don't, don't move forward and back, but they do adjust up and down and they also have a nice soft material. The seating position and the seats are pretty comfortable. The door panels, you can see there's some cheaper plastic materials here. This material actually lights up at night. In fact, this and on the dashboard at night has a really interesting glow. This is actually the topography of mountains of a national park out in Sweden. So at night, it really shows off a beautiful light. Although Volvo's ambient lighting still isn't quite as nice as what you get from the other European brands. 
Volvo says the reason for that is because they'd, they'd rather not go with a flashy design. Now, the rest of the door panels you can see has a soft touch injection molded plastic, soft over here, more of that carpet, and then down here you can see it's a hard touch plastic. My tester also has a 13 speaker Harman Kardon stereo that's included with the ultimate package. It sounds pretty good, not quite as nice as the Bauer and Wilkins systems in the more expensive Volvos, but it is a relatively nice compromise here. Now getting inside, you can see the step in height for this vehicle feels SUV-like. So compared to the Ionic 5 and the EV6, this doesn't feel like you're getting into a hatchback. And then you can see the rest of the cabin is pretty familiar when I shut the door. The door has a kind of tinny sound to the thunk. I'm not really impressed with the noise. Yeah, I, I've heard much more uh, premium sounds when the door shuts, but overall you can see the rest of this cabin uh, feels relatively modern, although the screen here is starting to get a little bit small. The materials here on the dash are soft touch injection molded plastic, but again, none of that real leather with the stitching that you get in the more expensive Volvos. It's kind of a, you know, a compromise you have to make by buying this lower end model. You can see more of that plastic trim, which feels a little bit on the cheaper side. Down here it is hard touch plastic materials. The steering wheel you can see has some nice uh, leather materials. It feels like real leather. It feels different from the seats for sure. You have a manual tilt and telescoping wheel. Uh, which is nice, uh, offers a good amount of adjustability. There's some nice aluminum trim on the wheel. And then this right here, I will say the door handle feels sturdy. So that's definitely a nice touch. Uh, the horn sounds pretty appropriate, although this is a smaller vehicle. So I'm glad Volvo didn't give it a dinky horn. You do have controls to control that 12.3 inch display. And of course, adjust the adaptive cruise control, uh, which is over on this side of the, of the steering wheel. This is for your audio controls and whatnot. So it looks fairly nice. This is a 12.3 inch screen, like I mentioned. And then this is a nine inch screen. This is part of their new Android based operating system. So this is not their senses connect. It is still frustratingly missing Apple CarPlay, which Volvo has promised for almost a year that it's coming with an over the air update. They're saying it's going to be here at the end of Q2 of this year. So we'll have to wait and see if they actually deliver. Now, getting inside this vehicle, there's no start stop button like the other uh, electric vehicle, the XC40 Recharge. Instead, you have to put your foot on the brake and then put the vehicle into gear. That will essentially turn the vehicle on. You'll hear the, you'll hear the chime. When you get out of the car and your butt leaves this seat and open the door, it will it knows you're leaving and it'll shut everything off. So that's something that Volvo actually took from Tesla. There's not even a start stop button over here or over here. You can see that's just a blank cover that's been covered up. Now, the beauty about this system here is it's entirely Android based. So what you can essentially do is just log into your Google Google account. Everything will kind of populate here like this is a tablet or a computer in the actual screen. You can see the map display that is full on Google Maps, which it does offer route planning if you guys are taking this on longer trips, which is nice. Uh, and you can even th say things um, using the voice commands. You can do push the home button there. It'll take you back to those four screens. You can say things like, OK, Google, I need to charge the car. There's charge point charging station 2.7 miles away. Want to navigate there? No. And you can see the car automatically and quickly charge point charging station 3.3 miles away. You can see the car quickly found chargers nearby and the voice commands work really well. It's snappy, it's responsive. This is exactly like your computer. I think Google's voice commands works just as well as Siri. So I do like that and it, it does work nicely. I also like how the GPS is also shown over here and you can get rid of that if you'd like to get rid of that by pushing a button that'll remove the map display over here. Uh, but this screen is definitely starting to look a little bit small. They finally added uh, satellite radio to this uh, interior, which is definitely nice. That was lacking from the XC40 recharge and the Polestar 2 that I tested. And then there's also this new range assistant that shows you the optimized range of the vehicle based on um, your driving style and the conditions and the speed and whatnot. So right now it's saying between 140 to 260 miles on a full charge. It also shows you your consumption. You can also turn on a range optimizer, which will help to increase the range of this vehicle, which is all very, very nice. There's a settings display here where you can access your driver, your driver assistance stuff. You can also go into an off-road mode, which I don't know what that does. This doesn't have air suspension. I suspect it has to do with the traction control. You can turn on the steering assist, lane keeping aid, one pedal drive, uh, which this vehicle's one pedal drive is very, very good. It's very Tesla-like. It's pretty similar to the Mach-E. It's either on or off. And then you can also adjust the steering feel in this car. Um, although I do wish that Volvo offered some actual drive modes, like a sport and eco mode. I don't know why they don't actually include an actual drive mode. Now down here, you can see there's a big knob for volume, a couple of other buttons here for your skip track, uh, front defrost, rear defrost, your hazard switch. Down here, you can see there's a wireless phone charging pad. There's two USB-C charging ports, which is nice. This shifter here controls the one speed transmission. Put it into reverse there. You can see there's your backup camera. It includes automatic rear braking. It has uh, active trajectory. You can also put in a 360 camera, 
camera, which shows you a top-down view. That all looks fairly nice, although I do, I have seen some better resolution cameras from the Kia twins or the Korean twins, which is surprising to say. Pretty, this is pretty similar to the, to the Mustang Mach-E as well. There's more piano black plastic trim. There's a nifty little trash can basically in the interior right here where this actually pops out. Uh, you can actually line, you know, throw your trash in here and then just kind of take everything out and throw it away. Decent size center console storage area, padded area are here for your armrests or your, your elbows to rest. And then you can see here, this material at, at night looks beautiful. However, in the day you can see it feels cheap and plasticky and you don't really know what it is until you see it lit up at night. Remember, this is a topography of mountains um, from a national park in Sweden. So again, cool little detail, uh, but it kind of has a cheap material where this is kind of transparent at night and it lights up. Um, over on the, on the other side here, you can see the seats have a nice look to them. They're comfortable and supportive. They even have the Swedish flag here, like every other 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 Volvo uh, product. More of that carpet, uh, blue carpet on the side there. The glove compartment, you can see it's a bin style. It's damped, but it's not lined with felt. And then above me, you can see beautiful LED lighting, nice frameless rear view mirror, but Volvo doesn't offer a digital camera mirror. Your view out of the back is also slightly compromised. And then above me, you can see this is very dark tinted. I like how it's completely all glass. It doesn't open, but some people definitely would probably prefer to it have a retractable shade, but it definitely, it definitely adds to the airy feel of this cabin. So overall, it's a nice place to spend time, has most of the tech that I like, feels actually pretty spacious in here. It just doesn't have that luxury uh, premium car feel that I expect from a vehicle that wears that Volvo badge. Looking at the back seat of the C40 Recharge, you can see it has the same legroom figures as the XC40. So you have just over 36 inches of legroom, which is pretty good. However, you have a compromised headroom area because of that sloping roof line. The door materials are the same from the front, a soft touch injection molded plastic, kind of a cheap plastic over here, nice aluminum door handle that feels sturdy, and then more of that blue carpet splashed throughout to give it a unique look to it. Now getting inside, you can see I did have to duck my head and I'm only five foot seven, but once I get back here, there's a surprisingly good amount of legroom considering how small this vehicle is on the outside. You can see um, there is a floor here, a hump here that is compromising on the middle seat space because remember, this is not a fully dedicated EV. You have rear seat vents over here. You have three level heated rear seats, which is nice. You have two USB-C charging ports, which is great. Two storage pockets and then the seats themselves have an armrest that folds down and gives you two cup holders. These seats don't they don't recline, they just fold down, which you can hear there's an electronic mechanism for that. But overall, if you need to put a child seat back here, it should fit, but if you have taller friends over six feet, the headroom space is going to be slightly compromised, but at least you have a nice uh, open and airy view with this glass roof. So with just over 400 horsepower, the C40 Recharge, like its more conventional sibling, the XC40, has about 50 to 100 more horsepower than most of the dual motor long range EV competition. Uh, and this vehicle is about a foot shorter in overall length, like I mentioned earlier during the walk around. However, even though it is smaller on the outside, it weighs at just under 4,900 pounds. So it's not really any lighter, but we do have more horsepower and more torque. Um, so it should translate to a quicker vehicle. Now, Volvo says zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds. I suspect that's conservative because I got that time in an Ionic 5, which has 320 horsepower. Um, it is slightly faster than a Mustang Mach-E as well, but we've got our zero to 60 timing equipment. I've got a 99% charged battery right now. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. We're just gonna floor it from a stop here. Very nice pull off the line, really starts to ramp up. Zero to 60 in 4.24 seconds. That is a smidge quicker than when I first tested this car out in Palm Springs uh, about a month and a half ago. Uh, and that performance is impressive. I expected this car to be closer to the four second mark, but uh, that right there is the level surface of road. I've got basically a full charge. I don't know if it's gonna get any faster than that, but that is still an excellent performance. Obviously it's not as fast as a Model Y performance or a Mustang Mach-E GT or GT performance, but you have to admire Volvo. They've got the speed in this car down and it's certainly gonna smoke the Ionic 5, the EV6, the Mach-E dual motor extended range premium and an ID4. And it's also quicker than the new Toyota BZ4X and the Subaru uh, Solterra. So that's a really great thing, but let's go ahead and since EVs are so easy to launch, we'll just do it one more time. <laughs> there's no brake torquing, there's no traction control, no wheel slippage. But here on a slightly more uphill gradient, we got 4.4 seconds. So still faster than Volvo's claim of 4.5 and we're going uphill there. So that's fantastic numbers. This is seriously a speedy EV and the beauty about it is put your foot down and this thing just leaps off the line. It has so much low end torque. 
Uh, and could Volvo do a faster version of this car? Absolutely. They could definitely ramp up the motors and increase the horsepower by another 100 to give us 500 horsepower. This could easily be an under four second car, but it's not necessarily needed. I mean, for the C40 version, a Polestar <laughs> would be awesome. Uh, but this feels about as fast as the last Polestar 2 that I drove. And it's just wicked fun to just sit there and do this the whole time, especially if you have an unsuspecting passenger in your front seat that isn't paying attention, it's gonna make them basically, like if they're on their phone, it's gonna make the phone fall out of their hands or fly into their face every time you romp on the accelerator for this car. Now, in terms of the rest of the driving dynamics, now that I have the car for a full week, I can put it through you know, some long range testing, which we're gonna do uh, after this drive, because I wanna start the drive, of course, with a full charge. Um, basically, the handling of the C40 feels identical to the last XC40. This car feels firm because of that heavy weight, because of the 20 inch wheels. The steering you can kind of adjust to be a firmer uh, setting, which I have it on right now. It has pretty good uh, response, not very much feedback. Um, this car feels fun to drive. It feels sporty. <laughs> Put my foot down there. You can feel the front wheels are trying to spin for grip. <laughs> oh my God, this thing is just such a riot. Um, and yes, it, it isn't as sporty as the Polestar 2 with its Olen dampers, which had a worse ride quality than this car, but it's kind of got a nice balance. I think the Mach-E feels a little bit better to drive in terms of the handling dynamics. Uh, same thing with the Tesla Model Y. Um, and then the Ionic 5 feels about the same as this in terms of softness. The Kia has a little bit on the sportier edge, but a, a little bit more of a firmer ride. So Volvo is kind of going for this interesting middle ground between you know, like a Kia EV6 GT line and a Mustang Mach-E GT Performance. In terms of acceleration, it's there. In terms of handling feel, I also think it's kind of there. There are times where I notice the body has a few, you know, un unwanted motions. I think it's a little, it bobs around, especially when you start feeling that power. Oh, um, it is definitely an experience. It's a fun, it's a funky EV that does come with some compromises. Now, at a full charge, this vehicle was showing, I'll show you on the range assistant here, which the XC40 didn't have this. It was showing between 150 to 270 miles on a full charge. Right now it's showing 190 right in the middle. That is of course gonna vary based on your driving style, what roads you're on, um, the temperature outside, it's about 55 degrees outside. So this is a more ideal temperature for electric vehicles because we're uh, heading toward May here in central PA. Um, so I'm gonna drive this vehicle around all day today. We're gonna see what I can do in terms of a real world number. I'm gonna estimate this car is gonna do around 230 miles. It's rated at 226, but Volvo, I suspect, is being a little bit more conservative on the range. I had an XC40 recharge last year, which had the lesser range. Volvo increased the range by uh, via a software update, which they're gonna do also with this vehicle with their Google Android system here. It, you can basically get over there updates that'll improve the range, improve the speed of the system, the technology in it. I believe I got around 220 miles in that vehicle. So I suspect this will do a little bit more, but we'll talk about that uh, in the conclusion portion of this, this video once I actually do the range test. But overall, um, the interior of this car is perfectly fine. It's comfortable. The seats are made from recycled materials. This is a completely leather-free cabin. It's Volvo's first. And if I have to ding the Volvo's interior, I mentioned earlier the interior doesn't feel all that luxurious, and it doesn't. Um, not definitely not as nice as like the XC60, XC90, the V90, the V60, whatever. Those larger vehicles aren't that aren't built on the CMA platform that have a much more premium feeling cabin definitely feel more Volvo expensive. But I guess for those of you who prefer sustainable materials, I mean, the f carpet is made from recycled PET bottles, which is pretty not, pretty cool to think if you think about it. Um, the tech in this car is still missing CarPlay, which is inexcusable. Volvo keeps telling me it's coming in an over-the-air update, but I still haven't seen it yet, so I'll believe it when I see it. But overall, this is a comfortable, fun-to-drive electric vehicle that you can drive on longer distances. Uh, remember, it'll accept up to 150 max kilowatts of max charging. But just keep in mind, there are faster competition out there. And uh, at the price that Volvo is asking for this vehicle, you are making a sacrifice. You have less space, less range, less faster or less quick charging capability. Uh, and it's a smaller vehicle, but it costs about the same money, if not a little bit more versus similar competition like a Mach-E, um, a Volkswagen ID.4, uh, Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6. And of course, there's that Tesla Model Y, which is still very much the standard in the segment. 
So after spending a full week with the C40 Recharge, just like its more conventional styled sibling, the XC40, there are plenty of reasons to like the C40. This vehicle is pretty quick. In fact, it's quicker than all of the competition except for the performance models. Volvo gives you a little bit more power, which results in zero to 60 in just over four seconds. It's plenty fast and the car also looks great. I love the styling of this coupified SUV. In fact, I don't even like the coupe style SUVs, but just like cars like the Porsche Cayenne Coupe, I think Volvo did a really great job with the look. The handling is good of this vehicle. The ride quality is good. And for considering how small it is, it does offer a pretty generous amount of interior space in the front seats, in the back seats. The cargo area is definitely compromised, but really in terms of the interior, I have to knock this car for its slightly cheap feeling materials. I know Volvo used a lot of recycled materials. It's completely leather free cabin, but this is a Volvo with a pretty expensive price tag and I expect a more luxury feel. The interior lighting is a nice touch, but you only see it at night. But other than that, I think the inside has something to be desired, especially with the fact that in the tech department is still lacking Apple CarPlay as of this filming. Now, I know you guys are also interested in the real world range. Now, I drove this vehicle. I spent the whole day with it, driving it all around town, doing my errands, not even charging the vehicle. I did take it on a couple of highway jaunts where I mixed in some city driving. And in my week's worth of testing, when I did a range test in this vehicle, I averaged about 238 miles on a full charge. Now, 240 miles pretty much on a full charge is pretty good. However, most of the competition should do better. It's because the Volvo C40 Recharge, just like the XC40, isn't the most efficient. I averaged around 40 miles per kilowatt per 100 miles, which is not great. In the world of efficient EVs, something like the Ioniq 5, the Tesla Model 3 or Y will do under 30 miles uh, per 100 miles of kilowatts of energy. So again, this is not the most efficient, even though it has a nicely sized battery pack, I think Volvo through over the air updates should be able to improve that range. I think when they can get it closer to 250 in the real world, that should be a nice compromise. But again, everybody really wants to see 300 miles of range on a full charge. That's kind of the magic number. So I would like to see Volvo get there eventually. But just keep in mind for now, this is a fun, spunky EV to drive, but it does come with a few compromises and that's in the range for long range and for the charging speed. Now, if that doesn't matter to you, most of you are gonna be charging at home. This is a fine EV that you can occasionally take on long road trips. Just keep in mind, you're not gonna be saving any money on this vehicle, even though it is smaller versus the competition. This car starts at $58,900. It only comes as the ultimate trim here in America. They don't offer a less expensive pure version. Now, if you're keeping score, that's about $3,000, $4,000 more expensive versus the XC40. However, that's for a base XC40 recharge in pure trim. If you spec up the XC40 to have the ultimate trims equipment like this car, the price delta is actually only $600. So with destination, this car comes in at around $59,900, just under $60,000. That is about two to $3,000 more expensive versus a Mach-E, an EV6 and a Hyundai Ioniq 5 with the dual motor extended range battery packs. It's about $8,000 more expensive versus a Toyota BZ4X, Subaru Solterra, which I actually technically don't have pricing on that yet, final pricing, and a Volkswagen ID4. A Tesla Model Y is about $3,000 more expensive than this vehicle because remember, Tesla has been increasing the price over the years. So Volvo definitely occupies an interesting middle ground, a niche in this segment. So if you want something that's slightly faster, doesn't have quite as much range or DC fast charging capability and doesn't have quite as much room, but is smaller on the outside. The Volvo twins are certainly worth a look, but I think Volvo needs to seriously come up with a competitor that is the right size, similar price with uh, a range that comes closer to 300 if they truly want to be taken seriously uh, in this segment, which they promise they will. There are many more EVs coming. This is just the second version of their march toward full electrification. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Volvo C40 Recharge. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you.